Like it, do you? It's not that I don't like it. It's just that I'm not sure this is how I want to remember it. Lisa, I promise it's going to be fine. CJ and Sherry came here. Dave and Cindy and, and Chris and Mimi. And Mimi told you it was all right. Mimi was so loaded, I don't think she knew who she was. Come on, Lisa, she couldn't have been that loaded. She said she could see the ocean from her room. All right, I, I promise. This is gonna be fine, okay? Besides, it's who you're with that counts, not where, right? Right. Okay. I'll be right back. Hey, sweet steak. Hot dog. What's the occasion, honey? Arnold Schuster died. Who? The real estate agent that sold us this place. Margaret, let me tell you something. You may not believe this, but we're sitting on a gold mine here. A gold mine? That's right, right here. And we're sitting on it. Oh, Roy, what we're sitting on is our brains. People waltz in here, plunk down 18 bucks for a room, then waltz right out with 50 bucks worth of our TVs, towels, and toilet seats. Margaret, the road to success is not without a few potholes. The only gold in this place is in our teeth. Hello? Anybody home? A nugget has arrived. Yeah? Um, I'd like a room. Can you narrow it down? Double, single? What do you want, son? Double. Here, fill this out. How long will you be staying? Uh, a couple. A couple of days, weeks? Decades. Um, hours. Where are you from, son? Kennedy High. Here, don't fill that out. It'll be $20 in advance. Number 18, down on that side. Don't want to yell and scream or carrying on. Whatever you do, do it like your parents is in the next room. You got it? I got it. Good. Thank you, sir. Here, George, again. And what is that supposed to mean? This place isn't exactly on my hit parade. Tracy, a bed is a bed. Go 
God, George, you really have a way of bringing things into their proper perspective. Save it, kid. Fighting's no fun with your clothes on. I'll remind you of that in the courtroom. Office. Number four? Yeah, right. No. Now, there's a TV set there this morning. I'll be down in a minute. Roy, I realize it's a little late to consider another career change, but I'm still not convinced the big money isn't in fried chicken. Now, that's a beetle-brained idea if I ever heard one. Look, Margaret, we're creating something special here. I mean, the pink motif, these snappy outfits, they all say something. Shoot, honey, our business has already increased by 15%. It's up 15% because we get the people with hangovers. They think they're checking into a bottle of Pepto-Bismol. Well, 15% is 15%. Uh, a couple more good ideas and we'll be sitting in hog heaven. A man with vision. Take care of them, will you? I've got to go to number four. What can I do for you? Ah, like a room with a double bed, nothing fancy. A room with a double bed is fancy. Eighteen <laughs> fifty. Huh, when did it go up? Oh my God, you didn't tell him? I told him. I told him. He must have made a mistake. Great. We haven't even started, and already there's a mistake. Look, I'll go back. We'll get another room. It'll be okay. No, are you crazy? He might change his mind. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. There. Well, are you coming in? Hey, are you all right? I don't know. You don't know if you're coming in, or, or you don't know if you're all right? I, I know this isn't the greatest. I know it's, it's not even really very good, but at least it's not the back seat of my Volkswagen. Right? Right. And we are alone, right? Right. Let's, let's not waste any more time. Wait a minute, Larry. Look, I want to talk about after it's over. Uh, how can we talk about after it's over before it's even started? You don't have to get mad. Lisa, what I'm trying to say is, is for the first time in our lives, we're alone. I, I mean, I mean, really alone. Tonight's our night, finally, and it's not going right. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Nothing. Larry, you're not doing anything wrong. It's me. I don't know. I'm just nervous, I guess. I mean, after tonight, things are going to be different. I won't be the same person. I'll be... Well, I know what I won't be. And it kind of scares me. I mean... I'm ready to go to bed with you. I know that. But I don't know. Do you understand? Yeah. You think I'm crazy. Come here. No. Come <laughs> on, oh, Larry. I think I need a drink. You miss me? How could I, George? I didn't shoot. Oh. Which room this time? Uh, 14. 14 again. Oh, boy. Are you feeling all right? You know, I have the distinct impression something's bugging you. Oh, nothing's bugging me. Nothing ever bugs me. I'm just the unbuggable type. I knew it. Something's bugging you. Well, whatever it is, forget it. It's not worth ruining our sex over. You're so understanding, George. Oh, damn it. I forgot the cigarettes. Here. Should I start without you or wait? Wait. I wouldn't want you to wear yourself out. <laughs> oh. Hey, what the 
hell is the matter with you? Huh? You almost hit my car, you stupid son of a... What? You almost hit my car. Almost. Haven't you heard a missus as good as a mile? Hey, this ain't no mile here, Mike. Mark. Yeah, that's what I said, Mark. Anything else you wanted to say, pal? I'm not your pal. I think I can live with that. As I was saying, we're on a 25. Second down, three to go. I thought for sure he'd call a bomb, but does he call a bomb? No, he doesn't. George, should have put my Forget fist right... It. It's not worth ruining our sex over. You don't care, do you? Huh? It's not your car, so you don't care. If we're not in our room and out of our clothes within five minutes, it won't make any difference. I'll be damned if I'm going to cram the foreplay and orgasm into one act just to get you home on time. Okay, fine. Only next time we bring your car. ever found out, I'd probably be grounded for the rest of my life. If your parents ever found out, I would be dead. No, you wouldn't. They like you. They'd probably just break your legs. Well, here's to them never finding out. Dropping back for the scream, and the crowd's on its feet cheering so loud, I can't even hear myself think. First guy that comes at me is Borkman, the safety. This guy hates my guts. He said so in a press conference before the game, so I know he's gonna try and break my neck. The quarterback fakes the handoff, then spins and fires a bullet right at me, and I swear to God it was smoking he threw it so hard. Slams it to my side. I thought for sure it cracked my rib. But I didn't have time to worry about that. I just gathered that sucker up and made my move. But when do you know it? Borkman's right there. But before he can nail me, I stiff him in the nose. I think I busted it, because he folded up like a wet noodle. So much for his press conference. Anyway, I knock over another guy and another. I'm getting lousy blocking like you can't believe. I'm having a heck of a time just getting out of the backfield. So I throw a couple body fakes. And I start running, my legs are pumping like pistons, and I'm charging downfield, dodging right and left, left, this is left and right. And now I'm across the scrimmage line, and I'm gaining 5, 10, 15, and I see an open space in front of me, and I'm on the 40 and still going. Then I hit the 30, the 20. Guys are breathing down my neck. I look over my shoulder. It looks like a friggin' war zone behind me. Then one guy comes sailing out of midair, right from my head. But I see him out of the corner of my eye. I duck just in time. 
Last thing I saw, he went plowing into the eyewitness news team on the sideline. <laughs> anyway, I'm on the 19-yard line now and heading for the goal. Then I hit the 15, and I straight arm another dude. I mean a real jawbreaker. And this guy bites the dust. And now I'm on the, the 14, and I can see those goalposts. And then I'm on the 13, the 12, the 11, and I'm stepping on the 10 and heading for the 9, the, the 8, the 7. And I, I look back over my shoulder again, and I see these two huge black dudes on my tail. And I mean, they look like they're carrying blades, man, wanting to stop me any way they can. And I mean, I don't think my legs have any more, but it's like they're flying. And I'm on the six, the five, the four, the three. And I look around and every person in the place is on their feet cheering so loud it was like hearing a bomb go off i couldn't believe it and then i look in front of me and the goal line is right there right in front of me and the whole place is screaming come on big mark come on big mark and i'm hearing this and i'm pouring it on now i'm on the two and i feel those two black dudes leaping through the air chomping down like mad dogs and i feel this hand curl around my ankle clamping down like a vice grip and i feel my leg my leg go out from under me and i'm falling and falling but i'm crossing the one then the goal line i'm going right across it the ball under my arm i couldn't believe it i was home and the place went nuts screaming and cheering and waving those flags i got to my feet i threw the ball down touchdown How exciting. Where'd you learn to drive? Correspondence school? I took a crash course. Guess we're lucky to be alive. I think we're lucky we have a borrowed car. <laughs> Don't you guys take anything seriously? I can't speak for Max, but I take you seriously. Otherwise, why'd you think I brought you here, Marlene? I'm Charlene. She's Marlene. <laughs> <laughs> Have we got any more beer back there? I think that was the last of it. Damn. I guess that means I'll have to buy some more. Or suck on your sweater. <laughs> we don't have all night. Depressing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> While we're gone, don't do anything I'd like to watch. <laughs> Charlene, I'm not sure I'm up for this. We have got it made, Max, my man. We are standing at the gates to the Garden of Eden. We are on the brink of a close encounter of the fourth kind. I don't know, Skip. You don't know. You don't know. What do you mean you don't know? What do you think this is? This ain't no restaurant. I just have the feeling that something is going to go wrong. What could go wrong, Max? I'm here. Look. Kid, you're about to experience life's greatest passion with a woman you only met two hours ago. Now, that's not something that happens every day. Skip, I just don't know about all this. Don't do this to me, Max. Don't fold on me now. Don't make me regret taking you under my wing. I know you've got the right stuff. With the right coaching, you could almost be as good as a guy like me. But this is a game of confidence. If you lose it up front, you're finished. I'm finished. We're all finished. Don't you think you're being a little bit melodramatic? All right, maybe a little bit. But it's for your own good. Look, I know what you're going through. God knows it isn't easy going out night after night, picking up women in a series of meaningless but passionate affairs. Christ, Max, don't you think I hate being this handsome, heartless, sexually superior stud and driving women into a frenzy of pleasure beyond their wildest dreams? Don't you think just once I'd like to be Mr. Average and have hobbies like fishing or woodworking or mountain climbing? Of course I would. But that wasn't my calling or yours. That's not what guys like you and I were meant for. No, Max. 
Women are our mountains. And we must climb as many as we possibly can. And why? Because they're there. All right, all right. I got a great idea. Yes? I was sneaking out the drain in number three when it struck me. Just like I heard the wild buffaloes. Now, just chew this over for me. A pink elephant. A pink elephant? Yeah, we can stake him right out in the front yard. Can't you just picture what this would do for business? I can just picture what that would do to the front yard. Honey, just focus in on this. Now, this could get us all the recognition that we've been looking for. The only recognition this could get us is from the health department, the SPCA, and Alcoholics Anonymous. I'll get it. That woman wouldn't recognize a brilliant idea if it bit her on the butt. Gentlemen. Uh, we'd like your two best sweets. Thanks for the compliments, honey, but my sweets are spoken for. <laughs> <laughs> then how about two rooms, two beds? All I've got left are two beds, one room. George. Huh? Do you think the romance has gone out of our affair? What? We're the only people I know that smoke before we have sex. Don't be ridiculous. I don't think it's ridiculous. Tracy, now where does it say that smoking has to come after sex? You think I'm crazy. I hate to make gross generalizations, but I think all women are crazy. To some degree. And what does that make men? Victims of circumstance. George, fuck off. I love it when you talk dirty. It gives me goosebumps. Good. How's this? You're an asshole. All right, look, I'm only kidding. You're not crazy, and I'm not an asshole. I agree with half of that. <clears throat> I think it's time we ended this conversation. Pardonnez-moi. You still didn't answer my question. Do you think the romance has gone out of our relationship? No, for Christ's sakes, I don't. What do you think I'm doing down here, spelunking? What you're doing down there has nothing to do with romance. Oh, no? No. It has a lot to do with sex, but nothing to do with romance. The sex, I have no complaints about. That's grade-A stuff. It's the romance that bothers me. You want flowers, is that it? George, I want romance. Ow! Whatever it is, whatever it takes, like it used to be. Like it used to be? Tracy, it is like it used to be. What's different? It's you and me in bed. That's it. That's all it's ever been. That's not all it's ever been. You hurt my ears. Don't you remember the first time we met? Oh, geez. You were defending. I was prosecuting Linderman versus the state of California. Yeah, I lost, so what's to remember? The don't Aaron yawn, George. The card you sent me. Dear Ms. Prosecutor, you put on a terrific show. Congratulations. Are you related to the judge? I loved it, George. You know, I thought I was being very sarcastic. Then you sent me roses. It's the first time in my life I ever got roses. And that card, let me see. Dear Mr. Defender, nice defense. Should have referred to Schiller versus the state of Georgia, 1956. Seven. 57. Better luck next time. P.S. The judge is my uncle. I remember watching you during the trial, objecting, cross-examining, delivering that magnificent final remark. Hey, you really thought so? And I remember saying to myself, Jesus, has this prosecutor got one hell of a body? I think I had a heart on the entire trial. <laughs> I think a jury had a heart on the entire trial. I didn't stand a chance, a related judge and a horny jury. And then you asked me out to lunch in bed. We skipped lunch. <sighs> it was terrific, George. We went to that great little room on the 17th floor of the Hilton. 
Get breakfast, lunch, and dinner in? Twice. And miss two court appearances? And neither one of us smoked before or after. It was the best. No doubt about it. And now you bring me to this outhouse again. Oh, George, this is what I'm talking about. This shabby, cheap little room. What happened to the Hiltons of the world, huh? What happened to the room service and the breakfast in bed? Why is it all in the past tense? I want to know. Tracy, for Christ's sakes, be reasonable. Oh, be reasonable? What do you think I've been for the past two years? You have taken me to every cheap hotel in this city three times, and I'm fed up with it. I'm tired of trading romance for reasonable. Tracy. From now on, if you want reasonable, get a single. Fuck. This is crazy. They're never gonna go for this. This isn't gonna work. Easy, Max, easy. Sure, there's a remote possibility we may fail. I'm not denying that. But Max... If we give up before we've given it our best shot, well, then I guess we're just not the guys I thought we were. Skip, there's no way we're going to convince them of one room. I'm not sure I'm convinced of one room. One room. Let, let's try another motel. Max, one of the fundamental rules in the game of getting laid is do not warm up the engine, then shift into neutral. I mean, it's not as if we're dealing with Cinderella and Snow White here. These girls have bought the program, right here and right now. If we go out on a grand tour of the city at this stage in the game, the chances of going the distance drop to very depressing levels. Think about it for a moment, Max. Why did we come here in the first place, hmm? Was it for some tender female companionship? Possibly some intellectual stimulation? Perhaps even a long-term, one-on-one relationship? Or... Did we come here to get laid? No. Nope. Take your time before you answer. To get laid. I'm proud of you. Now, think positive. Think naked. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. I'm not kidding. Well, where did you get all this stuff? I stole it from my mom. Oh, and borrowed this from Mimi. Oh, this is gross. That or babies. If you think my parents would kill you for going to bed with me, just think what would happen if I got pregnant. Hmm. Well, maybe we should use two just, just to be on the safe side. Okay. What's this? The pill? Yep. Oh. I'll go for the pill. What about the side effects? Side effects. I, I thought the pill was supposed to stop the side effects. I am not talking about babies. I'm talking about throwing up. Throwing up? Sometimes worse, you never know. Larry? I, I don't know, Lisa. I, I don't think they invented this stuff to make it safer. I, I think they did it to make it harder. Ladies first. I don't think this is going to work. I feel a little weird. Marlene. No, wait a minute. Now, Marlene's understandably a little uncomfortable with the arrangements. And I, for one, think we ought to take her feelings into consideration. So you two wait right here. Marlene and I are going to have a little talk. I know exactly how you feel, Marlene. You do? Is it so hard to believe? I didn't mean that. I meant... I, I know exactly what you meant. It's his looks, right? The hard, square jaw, the sparkling brown eyes, the dark, wavy hair. It all adds up to one night stand. But don't you think he knows it? Don't you think he can see it written in the woman's eyes? Yes, Marlene. I can see it even in your eyes. What? Max Phillips, gigolo. 
No, really, I didn't Don't try to hide it. I know only all too well. So does Max. It's been his curse ever since, well, ever since that time on the beach under the pier ten years ago. But it's not all his fault. Sure, he's had one-night stands, haven't we all? I'm not denying that. But it's not like it starts that way. He always goes into it thinking, maybe this will be the one. Maybe this one will ring the bells. Sure, he's going to give you the most unbelievable sexual experience of your life, but if you think that's all he's interested in, you're wrong. Because deep down inside, it's respect he wants. Your respect, Marlene. And I think you know that. Tell me if I'm wrong. I don't really know that. She's all yours. Thank you. You okay? Mm -hmm. Fourth quarter, 55 seconds to play. We're down by three. We're on a 50, third and seven, but our kick is no good outside the 42. Got it? Got it. Right. So we're on a 50, third and seven. What play do you think we call? Remember, though, it's do or die. We gotta make that seven or punt. Punt. No, it's third down, not fourth. We don't punt unless we don't make the seven, okay? Oh, yeah, sure. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. So what do you think we call? Remember, third and seven. Touchdown. No, no, you can't call a touchdown. That's not a play. You gotta call a play like a 32 dive or a double reverse, something like that. How about a 69? What play is a 69? Honey, if you ain't scored with a 69, you ain't scored. Look, Mike. Mark. Yeah, right. Look, kid, what the hell are we doing here anyway? I mean, I know what we're doing. We're, we're talking football. But, honey, I assumed when you called me for this gig, you were interested in my body, not my brains. So let's either get down to business here or call the whole thing off, OK? What's it going to be? Hmm? That's what I get for going below minimum. You getting dressed? Very good. I thought we could do a little talking first. Why? Why? As in, how come? I thought you might want to know something about me. Hey, who gave you my number anyway? No, I want to know, because whoever it is, I'm going to have their mouth broken. Bet you didn't know I was a star. Oh. No, really, I'm on TV. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but being a star fullback isn't exactly being a nobody. People ask me for my autograph. Your autograph, huh? You ought to see what they asked me for. Yeah? Why don't you tell me something about yourself? Give me a break. What's wrong with getting to know each other a little bit first? I don't see what you're getting so mad about. All right, have it your way. I don't give a damn. I was just trying to be sociable. OK, forget it. We don't have to know nothing about nobody. No talking or nothing. I'll pretend I don't even know you. You don't. Come on, Lola. I promise I won't say another word. I want to make love to you. Sex. You want to have sex with me. Love is for non-pros. OK, sex then. I want to have sex with you. If that's what you call it, that's what I want. So what are you waiting for, a whistle? It's game time! You're very pretty. Thanks. I could just stare at you for hours. That does it! No more Ms. Nice Guy! No, wait a minute! What are you getting so mad about? Mm -hmm. I was just complimenting you. Lola, wait, will you? Give me a chance to explain. Just hear what I have to say. Jesus, Lola, time out. There's something I have to tell you. I've got a scream that'll shatter glass, so don't get any ideas. Well, look, please. Step aside, Tarzan. I'm only asking. <laughs> OK, OK. Get away from the door. There's something I got to tell move you. Move it. Just let me explain. <laughs> I'm moving. I'm moving. Lola, I'm a... 
I'm a damn it, virgin! You wouldn't bullshit me, would you? Well, why didn't you say so? If that's all the trouble is, get ready to make the team. Thirty-four. B. C. Very nice. Thanks. Seven. And a half. Impressive. Isn't it? Hmm. All right, this has gone far enough. Either we stop screwing around and we start screwing around, or we go. You set one foot out of that bed and our relationship is over. Don't tempt me, George. I don't believe this. I really don't. I don't believe we're arguing about this after three years. Does seem like rather a long time now that you mention it. Well, it has been a long time. So how come all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, you're popping this on me? I figured if I didn't pop pretty quick, our next rendezvous would be in the back seat of your car. Oh, now you're getting just plain bitchy. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's make it the front seat, then. All right, that's it. The end, Finny. If I wanted an argument, I would have gone home to my wife. That is what she's for. And what am I for, George? Now, don't start with that crap. You knew what you were getting into. Oh, I'm not complaining about what I got into. It's what the got into has turned into. Can we call a truce? Come on, where's the old fighting spirit? Where's your courtroom pugnacity? Arguing without a retainer gives me indigestion. Look, do you want me to call up room service and order up a bottle of wine and a little romance? Is that what you want? Will that satisfy you? Tracy, I'm asking you what you want me to do. You're leaving yourself wide open, George. That's not like you. Hello, this is room number 14. I'd like a bottle of Dome Perignon and two glasses sent up right away, please. Where do you think you are, the Hilton? We don't have room service. There's a liquor store across the street. What do you mean you don't have room service? What kind of a cheap operation is this? Asks what kind of a cheap operation this is. Cheap operation? Well, this is a classy cheap operation. Huh? How much to pick up and deliver? Now he wants to know how much I it heard is. Him. Give me the phone. Dylan Tan. Dan, he won't go for Dan. You're going to do it for less? Twenty dollars. Twenty? Twenty dollars? you got to be kidding. That's more than a whole damn room. We were closer to your car's back seat than I thought. What? All right, twenty. Twenty dollars. 
room 14. You satisfied? Well, down the hatch. All right, if you throw up, I'll throw up. Look, kid, I'm sorry. I come on a little strong sometimes. Don't let it throw you. You can't spend the rest of your life hiding. I've driven men out of their minds. I've driven men up the walls. But never have I ever driven one into a bathroom. Hey, are you sure you're not gay? I'm not gay. OK, don't take it so personal. Look, kid, I'm trying to help you. Why don't you come on out of there and we'll talk about it? I promise I won't bite. That costs extra anyway. Come on. So you coming out of there or not? You don't have to answer. Just knock once for yes and twice for no. Okay, I'm hitting the road, Jack. So long, virgin. Lola! Leaving so soon? I oh, know, it was a rotten trick, I'm sorry. Why don't you just close the door and stay a while? What are you going to do? I'll give you three guesses. I don't want three guesses. Don't worry. You can't lose. Well, I don't know about this. That's OK. I know plenty. I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe they are doing this. Face it, Max. We're irresistible. And there's nothing we can do about it. Think it'll stay up? Positive. You know, it's crazy. Three hours ago, you and I were total strangers. And now I feel like we've known each other a long time. I really mean that. Thanks. Has anyone ever told you that you're damned cute? Has anyone ever told you that you have very sensuous skin? How about beautiful hazel eyes that sparkle like diamonds? Pouting voluptuous lips? Glowing auburn hair? Have we been out before? <laughs> oh, Charlene, what I'm trying to say is that... Well, after tonight, I... I can't promise that we'll ever see each other again. I know it's tough, but... I just don't want to lead you on. That's why, just in case, I want to give you something to remember me by. You were great, love, Skip. 
I don't know what to say. Try. I'll treasure it always. I'll treasure it always? I know. Any further, I've got something. How bad? I gotta tell you. Oh. I want you to know that, well, that I don't usually do this. Well, that's nothing to be ashamed of, Marlene. I'm not the kind of girl that goes around hopping from one bed to the next. Oh, look, of course you're not. I just thought you might want to know before it became intimate. Well, thank you. That's very thoughtful of you. <laughs> There's something else that you should know. Are you sure? I have to like someone an awful lot before I can let something like this happen. Well, I feel the same way. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. It's important to me that you don't get the wrong idea. Marlene, in the three hours that I've known you, I have never once questioned your virtue, have I? No. I... I have nothing but the highest respect for you. I'd just die if I thought that you thought that I was that kind of girl. Oh, well, I would never think that. I promise, never. I hope you don't mind talking about this. Oh, of course not. I just thought it was important. It is. You know, because of what Skip told me, wrong impressions can really be damaging. I understand. Completely, uh, totally, absolutely. Do you understand? I do. Good. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, good. Oh, my God. How much? Seventy-four, seventy. Seventy-four dollars and seventy cents? You gotta be kidding. Oh, Christ. Fifty, seventy, seventy-five dollars. Keep the change. I like the paper bag approach, George. Shows you really know how to treat a lady. Keep it up, Tracy. Keep it up. Fish are not the only ones with a limit. Tracy, maybe you're right. Maybe I have been a little lax in our relationship. No, George, you passed a little lax two years ago. You're very close to an enormous lax at this point. All right, all right, an enormous lax, maybe so. But it has nothing to do with how I feel about you. Nothing whatsoever. I feel the same about you now as I did three years ago. Great. Three years later and you haven't passed lust yet. Don't you think that's taking emotional stability a little too far? And what is so wrong with lust? Nothing's wrong with lust. It's just that I'd hate to think after three years all you feel for me is a rumbling in your gonads. Tracy, I may be an attorney, but I do have feelings. You can't possibly think that's all I feel. George, I wish I knew. I'm beginning to think I'm just part of your routine, right up there with brushing your teeth and Monday night football. Don't be ridiculous. I rank you much higher than brushing my teeth. I'm flattered. <sighs> I'm joking, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> I'm laughing, for your sake. Tell me something, will you? Hmm. Will you tell me why women, the whole female species, equates the amount of money spent with the quantity of affection shown? Will you explain that to me, please? 
It's not women, George. It's me, Tracy. I'm the only one in bed here. It's not just you. It's every woman I've ever known. Unless they were showered with fineries, they became enormously insecure. Did I say I was insecure? I didn't say I was insecure. I think you've got insecurity mixed up with pissed off. It's the same thing. You're not upset because I don't spend money on you. You're upset because I don't spend money on you. Therefore, I don't like you. It's because the things you spend your money on get treated better than the people in your life. Now, that is absolutely absurd. It's not absurd. I'll tell you what's absurd. Having a thermostatically controlled garage so that your Mercedes doesn't get too hot or too cold, that's absurd. You know, I've explained this to you George, a couple of times. A German like, automobile... Just let me finish, okay? Having $3,000 worth of cameras and equipment so that you can take snapshots at Christmas, oh, and a $1,000 Gucci bag to store it all in, now that's absurd. Spending $15,000 on stereo equipment for your office? Now, that's absurd. And you know why? Because you spent $18 on this crummy little room for me. Now, that is incredibly absurd. George, all I'm asking is to be treated one quarter as well as your toys. Inflation. What? I think that's what our problem is here. Tell me you're not serious. Just think about it for a moment. I'm really spending the same amount on you now than I was three years ago. It's just for the same money we haven't been able to get the same return. Now, take this room, for example. Now, three years ago, for a little bit more, we could have had a room at the Hilton. And we did, right? Now, you can see the validity of that, can't you? I think you're in love. Yeah. It's only normal, considering. It's just so sudden, I don't know what to say. Charlene, face it. Admit it. Sure, it's hard to believe that feelings like this can overwhelm you so quickly, but only when you think in terms of just any guy. I'm not just any guy. I know. In the long run, if you, if you deny your feelings, you'll only be hurting yourself. It'll lead to frustrations, anger, and eventually suicide. So go ahead, embrace them, and always remember, it is better to love than to be loved. Let me hear you say that. It's better to love than to be loved. Perfect. You know, you're, you're probably thinking that our being here is just an, an accident. A fluke. A mistake. Yes, even a mistake. But, but it's not, don't you see? I, oh. I'd never seen you before. I, I never knew what you looked like, but somehow I, I knew I'd find you. Mm. How'd you know it was me you were looking for? Oh, don't ask me how I knew. I, I just knew. Some things can't be explained with the inadequacies of simple speech. It goes far deeper than that. I didn't want to go to that party tonight. I had to go. When I first saw you across the room, bending over to pick up your drink, I knew you and I were destined. 
Call it an impulse, call it an urge, call it animal magnetism. I don't care, but I knew it had to be you. Marlene, was it something I said? No. Was it something I did? No. Was it something I tried to do? It was the look in your eyes. The look in my eyes? I could tell what you were thinking. You could. Well, look, I didn't mean it that way. I've never worn anything like this before, and I wouldn't have tonight if I'd known that you and me were going to... Well, that I was going to meet someone like you. <laughs> Marlene, is that all it is? Now you're laughing at me. No, no. Well, yeah, but, but only because I have a confession to make. A uh, confession? Yeah, I know, it's uh, hard to believe I could keep anything from you, but the fact of the matter is, I did. I... I think they look great. I do. Oh. I do. I mean, uh, pardon me for saying so, but I find them damn exciting. So you see, there's no reason in the world for you to be embarrassed. I'm not just saying that. Oh, no, no, no. You have my word as a gentleman. Well, I guess it's okay as long as you like them. Oh, Marlene, silly girl. The clothes a person wears are not what's important. It's, it's what's underneath that counts. Oh. So what are you trying to say? That it's over? We're through? Is that what this is all about? Because if it is, I wish you'd quit beating around the damn bush. I won't say it hasn't crossed my mind. How can you think a thing like that? After three years, how can you even consider it? George, do you remember what you said when we first started? Something like, uh, don't expect me to fall in love. I'll never leave my wife. This is only a part-time deal. I don't recall those exact words. But the gist is there. All right, all right, but we both agreed to it. Oh, agreeing to terms and proposing terms are two totally different ball games. My part was more like sign on the dotted line. So what do you want to do? Hmm? Renegotiate? You're on strike till you get a better deal? Let's just say I'm open for offers. Money or promotion? Promotion. And what position interests you? George, when I was 13, my mother bought me a hope chest. And every year until I was 18, she bought something to put in it. You know, like sheets and silverware and pots and pans, and so that I'd be prepared. Then after I moved out and started going back for visits, the things in my chest slowly began to disappear. My mother needed sheets, so she took mine. She needed forks, she took mine. On my last visit, George, the hope chest, my hope chest was empty, and my mother was using it as a coffee table. You think you can get a little more specific? The impossible. Tracy, between you and me, there's only one thing that's impossible. Marriage. That's it. Why? Because you don't love me? Or because the alimony and the property settlements would kill you. Do you mind if I stay on the fifth? 
Why don't you sit on it, George? <sighs> Tracy, this is crazy. Marriage is out of the question. It has been since the beginning. I agree. In the beginning, it was out of the question. With 60 hours a week at the DA's office and 20 at legal aid, two nights a week was all I had time for. It was functional, George. It fit in with the schedule. No guilt, no strings, just good old sex. Sounds wonderful. Where'd we go wrong? We didn't go wrong, George. We just didn't go anywhere. Look, at the risk of sounding old-fashioned, I'm 33. I'm financially and I'm professionally successful. And I'm witty. This doesn't sound old-fashioned. I'm easing into it. I'm attractive and I'm still in good physical shape. But I'm still alone. And that's finally beginning to disturb me. I feel the old-fashioned part approaching. This may shock you, George, but I've come to the realization that I want a commitment. Full time, not just two nights a week. And hold on to your briefs, but lately I've even given some thought to the pitter-patter of little feet. And don't tell me to get a dog. Actually, I was going to suggest a small partner. <laughs> Look, Tracy, before we go any further, can we at least examine the alternatives? What alternatives? Oh, come on, Tracy, this... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is there somebody else? Of course there's somebody else, your wife. Not her, I mean, are you seeing somebody else? You, the married one, wants to know if me, the single one, is seeing somebody else? That's right. Of all the balls. I think I've got a right to know. God-given or constitutional? Tracy, you know about my wife, and I've got a right to know if you're seeing somebody else. Oh. Uh, Jesus Christ, Tracy, that's expensive. What's gotten into you? You want to know what's gotten into me? I'll tell you what's gotten into me. You have, you stupid jerk. You've gotten into Tracy, me. Tracy, cut it out. You've gotten into me and you've made Tracy, me crazy. Tracy, stop it. I can't stand it anymore, George. You're a stupid, blind, callous person, and I've had enough to hear. Tracy, let's talk this out. No, you just shut up and listen to me. If you had any respect for me at all, you never would have brought me here. I hate this place. I hate all these cheap, shabby rooms. And if once, just once, you would have looked at me from beyond the borders of a bed, you'd know there hasn't been anyone else in three years, and there isn't anyone else now! Can you give me a chance to no, explain? No, I will not! I just made the idiotic mistake of falling in love with Tracy. you. But at least now I know it was a mistake! Stop this oh, right now! I don't think I blame you. I don't. I don't. It was all my fault! You're drinking in my face. I had to do something. Bastard! Let me up. Not till you calm down. I don't want to calm down. You're not getting up. Have you gotten a hold of yourself now? No, but you have, and you're bigger. Tracy, you never told me you loved me. It was a slip of the tongue. Why didn't you tell me? I think the reasons are obvious. Has it made any difference? I don't know. Oh, it's comforting to know I have such a paralyzing effect on people. Tracy, give me a break, will you? I just found out two seconds ago. Well, what did you think? After three years of putting up with two nights a week, meetings on the sly, crummier and crummier motels, you think I just liked you? I guess I just thought we had a terrific arrangement. You just went from bastard to shithead. Tracy, I'm trying to be honest with you. Oh, don't break any habits on my account. I mean, I didn't know. Or maybe I didn't want to know. I don't know. But I do know one thing. I don't want us to end. You're too important to me. Could you translate that emotionally? I guess I'm trying to say... I love you. But, Tracy, I can't marry you. Don't worry about it, George. I know the score. I just brought it up for shock value. Could you let me up now? My blood vessels are backing up. So what happens now? What happens to us? Well, I thought about suicide, but I didn't think I could talk you into it. I'm serious. I don't know. Do 
you give me a hint? Oh, I need a reason, George. I need a very good reason to go on. So far, I haven't heard one or come up with any. I'm not sure that's it, George. I need something more than just physical passion. Coming in. As soon as I fix this damn light. Can't it wait until morning? Uh, it's only gonna take me a second. Do you know what time it is? Halloween? <sighs> is all this necessary? 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 No, I wouldn't say necessary. Not any more necessary than red is to a rose, than the moon is to a summer's night. No, I wouldn't say necessary. But where would the dancer be without his music? Where would the musician be without his instrument? Where would the poet be without his pen? Take away an artist's tools, and you make of him a common man. But give him one brush, and you will partake of his wildest fantasies. I never thought of it that way. You and I are one of a kind, Charlene. We understand each other, what makes us tick. But others, they see sex as a chore, a routine, a passive experience. But not us, not you and I. No, we see it as the stairway to heaven. This is the stairway, and this is heaven. You're gonna remember this for the rest of your life. for a week. If we don't get it soon, it's gonna be too late. Maybe we should use the diaphragm. The diaphragm? It's on the dresser. Yeah, please, we took the pill. Larry, please. Lisa. Please. Do we have to use that? If we want to be safe. Do we have to use it now? It'll only take a second. I just squeeze some of this on here like that and... Lisa, I, I don't think you're supposed to use the whole tube. Just a little extra, and then I put one end on the stick like this, and, jeez, it's slippery. Can you hurry it? I'm going as fast as I can, and then I, I pull it back tight like this, and... Oh, oh shit. Look, well, kid, it can happen to anybody. You just gotta take it in stride. It's not as if you lost the war. It's just that your troops retreated. <laughs> Mark, your trouble is you're all tensed up. I know, I can feel it. You're all wound up like a rubber band. You just have to learn to relax and, and let it happen natural. I'm a virgin, I'm impotent, and you're telling me to loosen up and let it happen natural. What do you think I'm trying to do? You think I planned this? Well, not consciously. You think I planned it unconsciously? Subconsciously. Great. I'm a virgin, I'm impotent, and I'm in bed with Sigmund Freud. You don't have to get mad at me. I know, I'm sorry. It's just that every time I try and make it with a girl, any girl, anywhere, something like this happens. 
How many times have you tried? Enough. The first time I was 17, I was at my girlfriend Cheryl's house. Her parents were out to dinner. We had the whole place to ourselves. She fixed some drinks. I lit a fire. Real romantic. And we hit the couch. We started kissing. And I made my move. I went for her breasts. Oh, God, she had great breasts. But it was no big deal. Breasts I had before. So I took off her blouse and a bra. And she started to undress me. We were both getting hot, you know? So I figured, if she hadn't said anything by now, tonight was the night. So I slipped my hand down her pants and got it right down to the goal zone. And all I could think about was doing it. So I started taking off her pants. She started taking off mine. Her clothes are all over the den. She's saying, oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. And I'm thinking, oh, God. Oh, God. And just as I'm about to put it in, bam, the lights come on. They're screaming and yelling. And the next thing I know, I'm getting a shit beat out of me. Daddy? Yeah. I never saw Cheryl again. Is that the last time you tried? No. Three more times with three different girls, but... The same thing happened. Their fathers caught you? Oh, each time I'm ready to do it, I start thinking about their fathers catching me. I try not to think about it. It only makes me think about it more. I just couldn't keep it up. Anyway, I gave it up to about a month ago. I was at this victory party after one of the games. I met this real pretty girl, a cheerleader type. She recognized me from the team, you know? I never had this kind of thing happen to me before. But she just started talking about screwing right there in the living room. I mean, I looked over my shoulder. I couldn't believe she was talking to me. And she grabs me by the belt, pulls me into the bedroom, starts pulling off my clothes. I start pulling off her clothes. I thought Christmas had come early. And she throws me on the bed. You're not going to believe it. Just as I'm about to put it in, Bam, the lights come on. They're screaming and yelling, and the next thing I know, I'm getting this shit beat out of me again. Her boyfriend. Her girlfriend. She was by. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. You think it's funny? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's my blocking arm. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm, mm, we'll kiss it. Make it all better. God. Easy, easy, not yet. Lola. Think of something else. I can't. Yes, you can. It's third and seven. You're on the 50-yard line. Your kicker's no good outside the 40. What play do you call? Lola. Come on, Mark, what play? I call. Yeah? 
Ay, ko. What, Mark? What? Ay, ko. Touchdown! Touchdown? <laughs> Sounds like somebody else just scored. You know, Tracy, I think we still have the magic. It's never been better. And I still say, and don't get mad, that the only thing that counts is you and me in bed. Any bed, anywhere. Right, George. Well, I better take a shower. We're running a little overtime. <sighs> the principal, George. <sighs> now, Lisa, now? Yes, Larry, now. Uh, where? Huh? Well, aren't you gonna help? Oh, yeah. Okay, move down a little. Not that far. Okay, ready? Push, Larry. Oh, that's it. Oh, yes, Larry, that's... Ow! Does it hurt? No, I'm okay. Oh, oh, Larry. Oh, oh, Larry. Oh, 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 Liz. Oh. Why are you stopping? Oh, you were great. Oh. Are you done? Well, sure. Uh, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I am. Uh, oh. Are you sure? Well, positive. You were so great. I was? The best. You're, you're sure you're done? Oh, yeah, oh. I'm sure. Uh, you're very good, too, Larry. Thanks. Uh, I love you, Lisa. I love you, too, Larry. Would you run that past me one more time? We've had it. We don't want to go through this again. Girls. Girls, I realize that the conditions here haven't been exactly the creme de la creme. We've had a couple of setbacks. I don't deny that. But this is not the time to throw in the towel. We have to pull together as a team. Skip, we want to do it our way. <laughs> Your way? We don't want any more walls. No more what? Walls. Just the room? We want you to go into the bathroom until we're ready. Ready? <laughs> For what? It's a surprise. You guys do like surprises, don't you? I definitely like surprises. I think a little surprise would be nice. Come, Max. When you want us, just whistle. You do know how to whistle, don't you? Just put your lips together and blow. At a time like this, I feel almost emotional. Congratulations. Thanks, kiddo. How long, George? How long do you think we'll last? <sighs> Tracy, we have a good thing here. Let's not ruin it with time limits, huh? Maybe you're right. Anything wrong? No. Nothing's wrong. In fact, I feel pretty damn good. That's my girl. Now, things are gonna be different from now on. You just wait and see. I know. I thought we were going to get 
get out of there. I'm so loud. I don't hear anything. I don't think they're out there. Now, where would they be? They're not in here. They're certainly not down there. Max, don't you see? You and I, we're like magnets to the female. They're drawn to us. They haven't any choice. Well, then what are they doing? Probably psyching up. Well, I wish they'd do it louder. What is it? Didn't you hear it? What? It sounded like a whistle. Yes. A whistle. I'll check. Oh, no. They're gone. They even took the car. My doctor's bag? Gone? We've been had. What about tomorrow afternoon? I'm not doing anything tomorrow afternoon. I'm free Friday night, too. Saturday, I don't have practice till 3. I could probably skip practice Saturday if... We'll see. I think we can work something out. Are you feeling all right? I'm fine. Are you sure you're okay? I'm okay. Maybe it's the pill. My clothes, my car, my wallet, gone. Well, sure, we've lost a little more than our pride, but... I don't want to hear it, Skip. But, Max, you can't let a minor setback like this... I don't want to hear it, Skip. No more, not another word. Sure, Max. Sure, I understand. 89-year-old Bagrat Tapagua liked Dannon so much... He ate two cups. Rye. That pleased his mother very much. Rye. Come in, Roy. Huh? Roy, time for bed. Margaret. Did you ever think of a pink? In the morning, Roy. Let's talk about it in the morning. Where'd you get that out of you? You sure look pretty. In the mood, eh? You're such a devil. <laughs> but you know, deep down, I think Charlene really went for me. Just 